Good evening and welcome everyone to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism. For it is the power of liberation, first to the Republican and then the Socialist. So glad to have you in the hizzy tonight on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Uh, big night tonight. Lots of big announcements we're going to be making tonight. Uh, on new shows that are coming on the Exceptional Conservative Network starting CPAC weekend. Uh, I'm, week, in fact. Uh, and I'm really, really excited uh, about this uh, as well. You know what we have on Wednesday night, which is SHR Media Night, Sackheads Radio Night with Sackhead Sean, Sackhead Clint, and BZ, uh, Sir Mark the Bullying Zeppelin, that he is. <clears throat> uh, they will be up at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Pacific. I'm telling you, the best late night urban conservative talk show in the world. Welcome to the best late night conservative talk show in the world. Uh, that is Sackheads Radio. Uh, so, good evening, comrade. Vlad Putin is in our chat room. The <laughs> Euro Pacific Bank Limited TZ in chat room. Yes, it is so good to have. Uh, Vlad Putin in. Uh, Mary Blackman, my bouncer, is in the hizzy as well. She is my bouncer in chief. If you diss her, you diss me, you will be dismissed. Dave Will is in here. Claudia, beautiful Claudia Cheek, is in here this particular evening. Listen, we're not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it's the power of liberation, first to the Republican and then the socialists. Wow. I I'm telling you, this place is going to load up. I I'm really, really pushing people coming into the chat room, the Euro Pacific Bank Limited TECN chat room. This is where you need to be. This is where good conversation goes on. And it doesn't have to be limited to good conversation just during my show. Good conversation go on all day long. You can be in here all day long at TECS or TECN, whichever page you're on, and hold great, some great conversations uh, right off the bat. <clears throat> Uh, but first, uh, I want to uh, give a shout out um, to Dan the Man Butcher, uh, who is Mr. Uh, HP Talk Radio, Mr. High Plains Pundit Media himself, did a show on Sunday, which I was a part of, uh, and just got the numbers in. 65,000 people were listening at the time of the late night interview. Uh, and the interview included Jeff Dunnitz and Melanie uh, for uh, Money Talk with Melanie. And so, a very large listening audience. In fact, one of the largest listening audiences he's ever had. And we want to thank Dan the Man Butcher for carrying us live and also Sakia Sean and uh, SHR Media Live. Uh, carrying us live, of course. And then also at 2 a.m. in the Liberty Channel, my friends, <clears throat> um, we are carried by Red Nation Rising. Uh, wow. Uh, I also have news. Uh, I, I don't know if I... Should I make this announcement now? I, I don't know. I, 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 it, it looks like I'm in <clears throat> striking range. Uh, because I'm number one, this this show that you're listening to, the Exceptional Conservative Show, is number one at TECN, of course. Um, but it looks like that I may be supplanting SHR Media uh, as the number one, or well, Sackheads Radio, as the number one show on SHR Media. So, <laughs> I'm sure uh, that my good friend... Saki and Sean uh, would throw a parade for me. I just know it. <laughs> Dave, yeah, I thought it was number one everywhere, too. No, no. My numbers are only two-thirds at SHR. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you know how we kick off our program, uh, this big program. And tonight we have a very special guest. Perry Drake will be joining us. We have a big announcement there. Um, but I want you to take your right hand, I want you to put it over your heart. For those who are watching via live stream, there's a big flag over here. For those who are watching Ustream, flag's right behind me. Uh, I have a flag in front of me. 
put your right hand over your heart uh, and let us begin. Tell you, get your kids to do that, man. I'm telling you, nothing more exciting. Listen, we're about to fire up the grill, uh, and we are about to talk to a young man who is a great writer, a uh, great conservative writer, great conservative commentator. And we want to introduce Hello. himself, present to others. Good evening. We want to present to some and introduce to others, Mr. Perry Drake. Uh, good evening, Mr. Drake. It's a great honor to have you on our program. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fine. How about you? Great, great, absolutely wonderful. Listen, I want to make this particular announcement. Okay, y'all can stop the music. Thank you. <laughs> you can tell it's a hip hop. Uh, I, we want to make this particular announcement tonight uh, for everyone to hear. Uh, Perry Drake, who is a tremendous conservative commentator uh, will be joining the Exceptional Conservative Network uh, next Tuesday, in fact, at 10.05 a.m. Uh, and he has a one-hour program, no, no, yeah, one-hour program on our network, uh, and we are very, very excited about you coming on board, sir. Well, I'm more excited to, to tell you that you can Bike on Dream, I started out in radio and wanted to do print journalism, mm -hmm. but my heart was always in radio. And I'm so honored and thrilled to have the opportunity. Listen, we're honored to have you. You are a tremendous commentator uh, out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, he is. Yeah, actually, I'm back, I'm, back, I'm back in Chicago. Again. Back, oh, my goodness. What made you do that, man? <laughs> Oh my lord, it's a long story. It's a really long story. Uh, it has to do with job transfer. And I like back up here. I was in Chicago before I went down to Dallas. You know, I, I had always wanted to go back go down to Texas because people in Texas are more in line with my thinking. It's a Republican state, Tennessee. It's very conservative. Exactly. Moved down there, and then I got transferred back up here. And so it's, it's just. You know, Chicago is... You ever been to Chicago? Yes, I have. <laughs> you might have seen... Here's an interesting thing that happened the other day. But actually, did you hear about... The, of course, you know in Chicago, we have a lot of black people. Yeah. A lot of black people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, it's a Democrat gun control town. Shouldn't be happening. Of course, it's happening. Well, yesterday... There was a two-year-old child, a black a guy, a game banger, and a pregnant woman that was shot. And they were shot in this area, a town called K-Town, because it was a, uh, a lot of the streets there begin with the letter K. Yeah. And it, was before, it couldn't have been more than five minutes before that shooting happened. I was right there on that corner. And I got up and I left, and as I was going home, I was probably about uh, half an hour away, and there was a shooting back on so-and-so street, and I was like, ooh, I was just there. Wow. Man. Wow. It's, it's just amazing to me what's, what's happened with this city. The first time that happened, I had another occasion that actually came up on a body and thought, I am. Mm -hmm. On South Prairie Avenue, South Prairie Avenue, not too far from where Obama's used to, the Obamas used to live here in Chicago. But anyway, that's wow. L listen, I, you and I both know about the domestic terrorism that's going on in the inner cities, uh, rife with liberal do-gooders who want you to believe that if you take guns from the good people, the bad people won't carry them. 
Uh, my own daughter, 27-year-old reporter, uh, Shanice Milton, was killed in Washington, D.C., uh, crossing the street. She was held between two gang members as a human shield uh, during a shooting. Uh, so we witness this. We know this to be truth uh, every single day. And yet, there are those who are on the left. And, and, and please explain to me, Perry, how this works. That you have African Americans who line up every single day to vote Democrat, uh, and yet they want peace on the streets. They 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 want uh, there to be safety in the streets. Their ideology doesn't line up with what they want. Okay, explain that to me. You know, to, you know, and that's one of the most difficult things that I deal with in my life. Mm -hmm. Well, I am. Uh, for the most part, I'm a lifelong conservative. Yeah. When I was younger, I used to think I was a Democrat. I was a liberal. But that's because I didn't quite know what those terms meant. But after I always started examining, I was, I, my first radio job was in Tuskegee, Alabama. And I had the, the good, good fortune to meet two young black guys that went to Tuskegee University, Kit Jones and Andre Dixon. You know, they had actually started a black conservative uh, club at Tuskegee University, of all places. Wow. And when, so I met them, and we would sit down and we would talk, and then they would, and as we talk, I began to realize I was not a liberal, and I was not a Democrat, I was always a conservative. Mm -hmm. And so after I made that transition to being a conservative, a conservative Republican, I call myself a default re Republican. I'm, I'm a default Republican <laughs> only because I default the conservative movement happens to be in the conser Republican Party. Exactly. But I am not a Republican by any measure. I tell people all the time, to be honest with you, I trust the Republicans a lot. I trust the Democrats. Because you know what the Democrats going to do because they do it. Republicans are completely different. But, unfortunately, I'm a default Republican, so I, I support the party. But mm -hmm. here's what bothers me. Mm -hmm. I sit there and I talk to black people, and I, when we sit there and we talk, everything they tell me, everything we talk about, they agree with me. Mm -hmm. They're conservatives. Yeah. And yet, <laughs> they can't get it. It's something so deep in their DNA. It's deeply embedded. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They just cannot bring themselves to look at it any other way. So it doesn't matter to them that there's this bloodbath in their neighborhood. Sometimes I look at them and I say to them, you know, the you guys are paying for your foolishness. What in that party is all those dead black bodies in the street. And we're glad to play it. Yes! And they look at me like it's crazy. I, again, I really, it's, it's so beyond me. It is so beyond me. It's so hard to explain. Other than, I don't know, it's cognitive. Not, the, the brainwashing, <laughs> the brainwashing and indoctrination over the past 100 years. Uh, even and and I agree with you in terms of the Republicans because if anything, Republicans should be jumping up and down talking about civil rights uh, as they were the uh, founding. The radical Republicans were the founders of civil rights movement here in America. Uh, they should be jumping up and down and pointing to the fact that they, if it were not for them and Eisenhower, you wouldn't have a civil rights bill in 1964. Uh, it, they should be jumping, but the Republicans refused to hold that banner. And so it was taken from them by those on the left. Uh, and the indoctrination by those on the left to black people has been just immense and so effectual uh, that you can go back to what Lyndon Bates Johnson said uh, when he said that uh, he would have those niggas for the next 100 years voting Democrat. <laughs> now, now, if y'all offended, if y'all offended because a black man said that on his own show, uh, I didn't say it, it was Lyndon Johnson. So you write your letters to Lyndon Johnson. Go right ahead, Perry. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and that's it. You know what? I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've actually been banned Facebook, <laughs> things like that, and the 
everything to, I'm like, oh, what did they just say? You're going to block you for the next 30 days because you would you have a, went against community standards. And I'm like, all I did was call a Democrat. That's it. That's <laughs> all I did. We're talking to, <laughs> we're talking to, we're talking to, I'm sorry, let me just do this real quick. We're talking tonight with Perry. Perry Drake is with us tonight. Perry Drake out of Chicago. Uh, excellent conservative and newest member of the TECN family. Uh, he will be starting his own program on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 o'clock. He'll be sandwiched in between by Melanie Collette. Um, and some guys have dreamed of that, but uh, not, not him. <laughs> <laughs> See, Melanie, Melanie wasn't in the chat room until I mentioned her name, and all of a sudden she popped up. She's in the chat room. So I can't talk about her anymore. I'm going to go right ahead, sir. That's funny. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I look at my family. I uh, come from a very large family. And just so people can know, my background is uh, public relations, and I was a journalist. I worked for a number of newspapers, the Chicago Defender. A lot of you may be a, as a, uh, one of the oldest black publications, which what most people didn't realize that Chicago Defender up until the 60s was mainly Republican, so later on it was sort of yet to be a Democrat. I worked for them, I worked for the, uh, uh, the Daily Herald, which is a newspaper here in, in the Chicago area. I worked for the Daily News, which was a New York Times newspaper, now the punk that was in Atlanta, Georgia, and the Atlanta Daily World, which was the oldest black, uh, mm -hmm. published black newspaper, which is still probably conservative in Atlanta. And I also did public relations and a number of other things. So, um, when I when I ended up in newspapers, I wanted to be a columnist, but it just never happened. Mm -hmm. I went into public relations, but I can tell you, I was I was probably the the, the most minorities of minorities because I was a guy in newsrooms, and I was a cons the only conservative. Yeah, and they they looked at me like I was some kind of a freak of nature. Uh, <laughs> They did. They couldn't believe it. Like, you actually believe that? I'm like, yeah. You know, it's it's funny. I, was, I used to use their own. Go ahead. You no, know, it's funny that you say that because I, I'm, I'm thinking uh, that when you begin speaking, uh, some of the principles of conservatism, they're running over to their friends and families who are at the job or whatever and say, "Hey, come here. They got there's a conservative here. Hey, look, look at that." <laughs> <laughs> they used to look at me like I was insane. They're like, you can't believe. But the thing about it, Kim, was I would call them on it, and I would always get written up. And that's a really bizarre thing. I would be getting written up, and they would say, well, Perry, you're creating a disruption in the newsroom. I'm like, how am I creating a disruption? <laughs> you're upsetting people. Uh, in case in point, one day we were sitting in the newsroom. And it was a big newsroom at the uh, Daily Herald here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about Fox News and everything and how conservative it was. And they're carrying on and carrying on. I was trying to avoid the conversation. So finally I said, look, Fox News is not conservative. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, yes, Fox News has some conservatism in it. They have like Sean Kennedy and they have like, and I named a different name. And I said, but then you have Bill O'Reilly who's a populist, and then you have her, Robert Rivera, who's a screaming liberal. And I went all the way down the line. I said, the only reason you guys think it's conservative is it's because they're right down the freaking middle. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> I think that as conservative, as a conservative, they can watch it, they can see it. They are not. And I said, they are not conservative. We're right down the middle of a fair and balance. I said, your problem is, and this is when I got written up, I said, your problem is, you guys believe in ABC, which is a bunch of commies, CNN, the commie news networks, and the CBS, the commie broadcasting system. That's all y'all care about. <laughs> and one of the girls got insulted. I said, and she came and she slammed some papers in, down in front of me. 
So, of course, my ghetto came out. Uh-huh. I saw, and I said, I ain't taking this F-A-K-T from any of you. <laughs> I'm in the medical editor's office, and I tell me, Terry, look at this room in the newsroom. Uh-huh. And you have the inability to get along with your colleague. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Can you talk to her? Okay. They, they didn't talk to her. It was, trust me, when I was in the new room, and here's a, here's a really big secret in the news rooms. Yeah. There's a, there a few other people who agree with the conservative point of view, but they're too afraid of using their jobs yeah. to speak up. Yeah. Because I would have them come to me and say, Perry, and then they would write, Actually, they were all white. Right. And then we would say, don't tell me about it, but I wish I could be as black as you are. <laughs> you know what I would say to them, too? What's that? You can't protect me? They said, what's that? I said, you see my skin color? That's the only thing protecting me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to explain? You find your only black conservative person to me. We're totally in the news world. That's the only thing protecting me. And I know it. Exactly. And, and I use it against them. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I know exactly what you're experiencing uh, as I have been thrown out of two churches. Uh, I have been fired from a job because of my political beliefs. I understand exactly what you're saying. <laughs> uh, that they, that they were, yeah. Number one, I want to tell you that. I we mentioned something earlier that uh, let me say this. I am really grieved to hear the loss of your brother. I've actually read about it. Yes. And at the time I connect the names. Mm-hmm. I really didn't. I didn't connect the names. And, and you know why? You know why I had to do Yeah, you know why we had to do that here in D C right? Uh we couldn't let her use yeah we couldn't let her use my last name because everyone knows that I'm a black conservative media. And if they had connected her last name to her last name, she would have never been hired anywhere uh, in D.C. Oh, no. Uh, so <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, because I talked with her about yeah, that. You know what? Mm-hmm. That's the thing that, that when I entered, I entered journalism because I just believed in the truth. Mm-hmm. I really do. I remember when I entered journalism, I was taught by my professors at the time that the job of every journalist was to seek the truth. Mm-hmm. And that's the bottom line. That's all that mattered. And so I ended up kind of naive yeah. because I used to tell people, all I believe in the truth, and I would talk to my mom. Mm-hmm. My mom, let me put it to you. I'm a journalist. And Truth. I don't judge whether this is right or wrong. That's not my job. Yeah. My job is not to make the world a better place. My mm-hmm. my job is not to to to, to give people a sense of renewal or anything like that. My job is to basically tell you what happened, this is how it happened, and this is when it happened. That's all I'm supposed to do. Yep. And yet when I got into journalism, I was would say, I would ask them, they would say, our job is to make the world a better place. And I said, no, it ain't. That's yeah. not your job. And years would go by, and I became a managing editor, and I would have to hire young reporters. And I would sit them down, and I would ask them a question. I'd say, what's your job? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They'd say, if, without fail, you can ask any reporter this, what's your job? And they would say, to make the world a better place. I'm like, no, it ain't. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, like, what do you mean? I said, tell you job. I said, okay, what's the job of a news organization? To make the world a better place. I said, no, it ain't. And they would look at me because I would be one of the many few report editors who would be interviewing somebody. And, of course, the other editors would be pissed at me. Yeah. They would look at me all cross-eyed and stuff. I said, then I would say, I don't care what they're telling you. The job of a newspaper is to make money, and your job is to tell the truth. 
That's it. And what's what's the number one thing? Make money. <laughs> Make money. That's it. Make money. Mm -hmm. That's it. Matter of fact, the new works for the Daily Mail had the best model of any newspaper organization that I ever know. You can look it up online. Its model was to make money and tell the truth. <laughs> That's it. Oh, well, Perry. To make money and tell the truth. And Perry people will look at me like, oh, well, Perry, isn't that kind of like short sighted? I said, no, it ain't. No. I said, Why isn't it? I said, you ever listen to either the pursuit of happiness, life, living in the pursuit of happiness? I said, what do you think the founding, the framers meant when they wrote that? Mm -hmm. The founders meant when they wrote that. And they would say, well, to be happy. And I said, so in a capitalist society, how do you find happiness? Exactly. By making money. There you go. There you go. And that's it. And I said, and, and so, so, so that's what gets me. It's like journalism, I was like, strange. I mean, it was the weirdest thing in my life. Mm -hmm. I was there and I would tell you. My mom would say to me, do you really believe what you said? I said, Mom, let me, see. I said, let me explain something to you. You're my mother, and I love you. But if I found out you were involved in some kind of criminal activity or malfeasance, mm -hmm. and I got the story, it would be front page news, and I'll be with you on the weekend in prison. <laughs> That's love. That's real love. Perry, That's my job. Perry, I, I would have said, oh, you do it 20 years. I <laughs> years. I'm just doing my job, Ma. Uh, my job is to tell the truth. And I'm sorry. The truth is the truth. Perry Drake is the... I put money in your, in your prison account. There you go. N not a lot. <laughs> not, not a lot. The truth is the truth. Exactly. Not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. I got to pay my gas. Money. That's right. <laughs> Sing you enough for some cigarettes. And that's what gets me. Yeah. And so that's what gets me. And so but back to what you were saying, one of the most, one of the things that I worry about when it comes to black conservatives, because, you know, there were 10% of us, I think it was, what, about 16% of blacks voted for Trump? 14% of black men voted for Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump. But what gets me is, and what I hope to do with the show, mm -hmm. I don't want us, I don't want to just be talking to each other. Yeah. You may have heard the old African proverb, uh, each one teach one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I hope to do. Yeah. I want to be able to go out and talk to people who aren't hearing the word, aren't hearing the message. Mm -hmm. That's one of my greatest fear about, one of my greatest apprehensions about what we're doing the people like you and I are doing. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to be. I don't want to be preaching to the chorus all the time. When I was at the Chicago Defender, the editor down there, I would write. Occasionally, I would write an editorial. Stations from all over the world would call because they wanted to hear the black side of things. Yeah, and they would and they would say and we would be talking. They would say, well. Okay, so uh, what are your thoughts? And I said, you got to understand, I speak for the news group, I don't, I don't speak for myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course, about what the news group's position is, and I would tell them their position. Then they would think, and would say, okay, Perry, you don't seem to quite agree with that, so tell us what your position is. And I said, okay, setting this aside for a moment, you want to ask, I'm going to tell you my personal opinion, which really has nothing to do with the newspaper, because I have to speak for the newspaper, which, you know, I really wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say that I had to say. And then what would happen was, next thing you know, I would check my voicemail, and I would have a bunch of, half of the call, calls would be threats. Yeah. But the other half would be saying, you know, better, I've been thinking the same way you've been thinking, and I'm so glad you said what you said. Mm -hmm. And that made me feel good. Yeah, it made me feel good, and it made me even overlook the threats. You know, mm -hmm. when we the threats, because now I was reaching people that nobody is talking to, and this is, which I'm glad that Donald Trump is the president of the United 
Exactly. And to pat myself on the back, I am one of the few people who correctly predicted that. Yeah. And that the Republicans will hold on to that House and Senate. But my greatest fear is that the Republicans and the conservative movement is going to blow another golden chance. Yeah, definitely. It's a golden chance to reach out to the black community and act building something in the black community. Well, okay. I was so heartened when Donald Trump mm -hmm. four or five months ago actually made his outreach to, black, to the black community. Not even not a Reagan did that. Exactly. As as dramatically as Trump did, and as vocally as Trump did. Exactly. I'm hoping that the Republican Party, conservatives, and even black conservatives, realize we have a very unique chance in history to actually go out there and get these black people and say, okay, this is why you should come and see it our way. Mm -hmm. And I just hope we don't blow it because I don't see this ever. I don't see this coming again for another couple of generations. Is that Perry? We're not going to blow it. You know why? Because you just joined TECN. Oh, yeah. You you just joined TECN. We're not going to blow it. Uh, in fact, we're going to we're going to win, and we're going to win big. Y'all going to get used. Y'all going to get used to in the every community. And I know twenty five percent of the people that listen to my radio program are actually in Washington D.C. Uh, right. Less than two percent of them I would consider conservative. So there are a lot of download listeners who listen in every single night, who want to think the same way we do, who want to believe the same way we do, but fear the same things that we don't fear, uh, in the sense of not losing our jobs. I, I have no fear of losing my job. I have no fear of losing my family. I have no fear of losing my church. All those were taken from me, uh, so I have nothing else to lose but to win. So we're going to be winners. And we will conquer, and we will conquer us as conservatives. Perry, tell everybody when your show begins, uh, and tell them what time they should be tuning in. Uh, and and I'm going to be blowing you up, uh, and you'll be on uh, SHR later on tonight, right? Sack yes. Yes. Okay, great. Tell everybody all the details, sir. Well, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be Tuesday at 10 a.m., but that's Eastern Standard Time, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be nine. It's going to be nine a.m. my time. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> it doesn't bother me because sometimes when I'm talking to people on the East Coast and they say, "Give me a call at 10 I call them at ten. They're like, "You're supposed to call me at ten. I'm supposed to call you at ten. They're supposed to say, "I'm like, "Oops." <laughs>
I, I never forget the day I was leaving work. I was working at the University of Chicago in the same job that Michelle Obama had. Matter of fact, job, they paid her three hundred thousand dollars a year to not show up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to the house. I ended up getting the same job. I didn't get anywhere near three hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> University of Chicago. Then we will expect to be to be there every day. <laughs> Wait a minute. You paid for They were like, you're going to be like, shut up. Matter of fact, Obama's best friend, Dr. Eric, uh, Eric Whitaker, I was his test person. Wow. So I got off at the, I got off at 5 o'clock, I went around the block, and South Curry Avenue, 5 o'clock now, in the summer. And there laying in the street was a young black boy wow. that he looked like a kid. And he was laying there, he had a white t-shirt, and half of him was covered in blood. I knew he was dead when I saw it. So I kind of looked at him, because I was shocked. Next thing I'm surrounded by police, and the police asked me when I see what happened. I said, I didn't see anything. I just got here. I was the first person I was seen. Later on, I read the newspaper. It was a 13-year-old boy that was shot by a 15-year-old boy. Shot him dead. And I, I'm just sitting here in the city, and I, and, you know, gun control. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I go to areas, because of my job, I end, up in, I end up in areas quite frequently, and, you know, I can't defend myself. I'm completely disarmed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Chicago is, I don't know, it's, it's I, I, I didn't really want to come back here, but I'm here, so I'm dealing with Exactly. But I hope to be not only a great radio host, but your correspondent here in Chicago. Well, you are. You are all of the above. And trust me, I have dynamic plans for world conquest. And you are a part of them. So <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. Like I said, it's going to be a, it's going to be a little learning curve because it's going to be a while since I've I've been out of it. I've been out of radio for a while, no. and I want to make sure when I come on here, my research is done, and I'm ready to talk, and and uh, I can go. I, 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 you know what? People say, I, people. I I think I can carry on for an hour by myself if I have to. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I know I can. <laughs> if I have to, <laughs> Perry. Perry, we now start talking. We love you, man. I don't know, I, Jane, I, I really appreciate the opportunity because I wrote a quick column earlier today, and I used to tell people all the time, I said, you know, because I've worked so many jobs in my life, mm -hmm. and I was never really satisfied with any of them, yeah. and people would ask me, well, Perry, why is it you're not happy? And I'm like, well, I always look at myself at this way. I always that what you should have been is what you when you play in a sandbox, which you imagined you were going to be years later. And I, whatever job I was working, I said, you know what? This job, when I was in this sandbox, I never thought I'd be doing this. Mm -hmm. The only job I ever really looked back on when I had it, and I thought, this is what I should have been, was when I worked at WDIO Radio in Tuskegee, Alabama. Wow. I was getting paid nothing, but I enjoyed it. I was on the radio. Mm -hmm. I was talking. I was just, it was wonderful. And so when this opportunity, I was, I was thrilled. I still am thrilled. Thrilled, and I just want to do the best job I can do. Whether I'm good or bad, whether I fail or succeed, I'm going to give it my best. Well, I can promise you two things. One, you will succeed. Two, you are the best. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, it is great to have you in between Melanie's show. Her show comes on at 10 o'clock on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Yours will come on at 10 o'clock, uh, or actually 10.05. We start on the 5 uh, on every hour. Uh, so 10.05 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're talking with Perry Drake. Perry Drake, our newest... Uh, correspondent out of Chicago and also the newest host on TECN. Uh, I want to thank you, sir, for coming on. I know that you got to get prepped for a little bit later on when SHR gives you a phone call uh, and you're on their show later on tonight. 
Um, you would be the first first host that ever got introduced on both shows, uh, same night. <laughs> so we will get a certificate or something for you. <laughs> <laughs> We love you. I am so honored. We love you, Perry. We know that uh, I'm telling you, radio will never be the same. Uh, conservative talk will never be the same. What's happening here at TECN has never been done before, and we're about to rock the world with Perry Drake. God bless you, sir. We'll be talking with you real soon. Well, God bless you, sir. All right. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Tell you, a lot of people look at me and they're like, <laughs> he said he's going to start a network. <laughs> uh, but look at that chat room. I got Ralph J. Chittles up in that house. Melanie Collette up in that hizzy. You know what I'm saying? Broadcasting live on Dan Butcher's radio. Having clips played by Dave Milner. The beautiful Claudia Cheek shows up at one of our events. And Mary Brockman is my bouncer in chief. And Mama is my attorney for the SHR chat room. I'm trying to, hey, we got it going on up in here. We'll be right back with Lolly Boy Dexter right after these messages. Ah, glory be to God. Hi, my name is Willie Lawson of the Willie Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We have a brand new show on at 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. We are bound to make you think. We are bound to make you see things differently. We are bound to push you into action for not only your community, but your country. That's the Willie Lawson Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network, 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. See you there. The bloviating Zeppelin. He's big footed enough radio shows to last a lifetime, courtesy of Sean, Clint, Ken, and Jersey Joe. Now it's time for him to waddle on his own two feet via the glorious SHR media. Good thy loins for the bloviating Zeppelin's berserk Bobcat Saloon. Coming soon to Ossicles near you. Excelsior. Welcome to Lion Chasers, where Philip and public policy intersect. And now, your Lion Chaser in the good fight of faith, Lonnie Boy Dexter, on Urban Family Talk. We're not saying that this not instance is where there's no racial injustice in the This is America, and people are human, and we're seeing the world. There's a president of first. It's first president to say that America is not a Christian nation in the but you will look pay for our enemies uh, while we defeat them. <laughs> you can't blame folks for messing up the city. There has not been an elected Republican in council in Baltimore City in like 50 years. And the uh, co captain's chair with me today, Reverend Ralph Chittles. Is... What's happening is the social justice movement has now been hijacked by a godless movement. Don't be bamboozled. Ladies and gentlemen, Frederick Douglass was a government conservative. <laughs> It's not a black or white issue. It's a God versus anti-God issue. None of those would say, well, I'm far away. It's all game, money. I can look at a lot. If you go to the crew that has the bags back at the train station, please, the train station, come back. We do it in a minute. No train, no train, no train, no train, no train, no train. But it's coming. Meanwhile, Brad is Bernie, the host of the Black Man Thinking Radio Show. Welcome to the show at Stanley Levy. Good morning, Ron. How are you? The core issue of the Bill Elephants are the home. We've got to get away with the entitlement programs and the things that hamstring us. And that's where the conservative viewpoints really resonate for my generation. I want to welcome to the show the host of the Exceptional Conservative Show. And that's the brother of Kenneth and Clinton. Welcome, brother. Ronnie, it is an honor and privilege always to be with you. Ever expanding audience. Your listeners, do Lion Chasers with Lionel Boy Dexter. If Lion Chasers sounds right for your station network, contact Will Addison by email wadison at amfa.net. Encourage your listeners to be Lion Chasers with Lionel Boy Dexter and Urban Family Talk. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have the great pleasure of having a conservative Christian icon of broadcasting with us tonight, none other than the great Lonnie Poindexter himself. Good evening, sir. Great pleasure having you on tonight. All those things, generation capital. <laughs> Hello, sir. First and foremost, can I say this to you? I want to. I want to thank you for recommending. I want everybody in the chat room should be giving this man applause. Uh, it was Lonnie Poindexter who recommended Perry Drake for TECN. Uh, and congratulations, sir. Uh, he will be starting on Tuesday at 10 a.m. on our network, right before your 11 o'clock start. So you'll get a chance to listen to him. <laughs> Fantastic. Look, look, I'm telling you the real deal. Uh, I hope, hope uh, our listeners enjoy his uh, broadcast. Oh, most certainly they will. They will indeed. Uh, listen, um, there's much going on uh, in the nation's capital. Um, I, I wanted to get your opinion first on the Mike Flynn thing. because uh, uh, You know, uh, he was released because, uh, as we discovered last night talking with uh, Joe Rice Johnson, uh, merely because he stepped outside of protocol to talk with an ambassador uh, from Russia. Uh, and it was he didn't do anything illicit, but... Uh, there was much fear about the fact that he did he did not tell everyone that he had done so, and, and thus he had lost the trust of uh, Chief of Staff Rince Priebus and Vice President uh, Mike Pence and President Donald Trump. So he was released from his job. Um, but there are individuals on the left who keep yelling and screaming about the fact that this is an indictment against Donald Trump and that the Russians are trying to run our government. I, I got to ask you, sir. Is this hyperbole? Is, is this overdrive from the left regarding this particular matter? Well, yeah, I think hyperbole is probably an understatement. Uh, they've been throwing pots and pans ever since they lost um, the pans ever since they lost the election, and so they can you know, throw up in the air and make noises what they're going to do. Um, you know, I had um, Senator Ted Harvey on my show the other day, and um, I asked him this question as well concerning Flynn, and he pointed out something to me. He said, well, it may be that the Central Intelligence Community had an endpoint. You had crossroads with them, and so they had an axe to grind, and that's something I hadn't thought about. Here's something else that kind of caught my attention. You are a Democrat. Yeah. Yeah. So he was actually actually appointed by the Obama administration. So I don't know. I wish I, I, I wish I had the contacts that you have within the intelligence community in the greater D C community, but I'm not that big a fish yet. And so <laughs> it's it merely speculation on my part. Um, I, I, I commend the president for pulling the trigger quickly with the decision that he made. Uh, whether it's a good decision or bad decision, I guess time will tell. At least we know the guy has no problem with saying you're fired. Yes. I know. What, and why is it that Republicans are not shooting back with that and saying that that's leadership? Yeah. When he knew that there was something wrong, he yeah. got rid of the person. But the re Republicans, you got John McCain talking about we need an investigation. Lindsey Graham talking about we need an investigation. What investigation do we need? <laughs> well, then, then again, you, you mentioned the term Republican and Lindsey Graham and and John McCain in the same sentence, and that's probably an issue right there because there would be more line than it would be Republican. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking tonight with an icon of Christian conservative talk, none other than Lonnie Poindexter. You can hear him on the trail, uh, forgive me, you can hear him on Lion Chasers Radio uh, 11 to 1, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, and just a terrific man. I, I hope someday to grow up to be as big as he is. He's got like 7 million listeners. Uh, around the country from coast to coast. You know, I just got one or two people in, uh, in a chat room, you know, someday. Uh, <laughs> I want to ask you. Hey, check. <laughs> check Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, but um, the House Committee uh, is, and, and their representative Jason Chaffetz, is working on Capitol Hill even as we speak to overturn a bill that came out of Washington, D.C., uh, allowing assisted suicide. Uh, and 
the mayor, Muriel Bowser, signed the Death with Dignity Act uh, a, a little while ago, uh, I believe about December or so, uh, and, and in fact, it legalized assisted suicide in the district and gave doctors the ability to offer lethal medication to individuals who are terminally ill and will die within six months. Uh, and and I, I just wanted your opinion because you are a big pro-life guy, uh, just like I am. Uh, your thoughts, first and foremost, on this death with dignity thing. And uh, is it wrong for Congress to step into district uh, rule, home rule? You know, I, it's a moral issue for me. Yeah. And Congress stepping in and you know, with that, uh, you can't legislate morality, but I, I tend to disagree. Um, it's a really cool name when they have um, death with dignity. They always come up with these clever marketing schemes to justify that which is immoral. Yeah. You know, we should not be in the, in the business, in my opinion, of determining who lives and who dies um, because it's, I think it's, it's an immoral thing as a sin. Uh, I mean, Congress for getting involved. Um, you know, D.C. is, as you taught me yourself, is a you know, city. And, um, you know, you got issues. You know, I, I met, you just reminded me of something. I yeah. met a gentleman. Um, I want to, I think he was from Denmark. Mm -hmm. And he was at the March for Life. And he was talking about how they adopted um, the assisted suicide. Uh, provisions in their nation, and they were having tremendous negative fallout from it because now you've got teenage girls who are going through emotional withdrawal because they broke up with the love of their life. And I know you have daughters, you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's probably what the love of their life every two months and <laughs> wanting to kill themselves because of it. And so, <laughs> you know, we're down that slippery slope, but then you have the same way. Um, it sounds like one and said, yeah, and, and Melanie Collette, who happens to be in our chat room, brings up a point, uh, and she is definitely uh, a a very strong conservative. But she says, uh, "Do I want to tell someone who is suffering terribly that they can't? Uh, that's putting myself between them and their maker." Yeesh. Is that really? I, I, if, in my opinion, I don't think you are because your maker has control of the day in which you are to see him. Uh, and even his, even his son suffered at the cross uh, a, a whole lot worse than many people go through uh, in, in terms of even a, a cancer. Death. And, and I, I know that a lot of people are sitting back and saying, hey, Ken, how can you make that judgment call? But isn't that what we're called to do in the first place? I, I, I don't know. Am I wrong on this, Wally? I don't think you're wrong on it, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just responsibility. I mean, if you ask someone with Listen, I agree with you wholeheartedly, and and apparently, uh, Melanie is in the chat room, and she used the angry face icon uh, towards me because she says I'm mischaracterizing what she said because I left out the first part. Uh, the but her statement is but legislatively, do I want to tell someone who is suffering terribly that they can't, thus putting myself between them and their maker? Okay, I added it. No. <laughs> Doesn't change my opinion, uh, but uh, hopefully I have not offended the old great Melanie. <laughs> you gotta do something about your little sister, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you need to do something. Yeah, about it. I, I would have, I would have first put this back at point uh, concerning the abortion issue, where I was told, you know. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. It's a woman, you can't tell a woman what she can do with her body. I says, no, I can't tell her what she can do with her body. I can tell her what's a law because I do have free speech. Um, I said, but ultimately, I don't want to pay for it. And if she chooses to do it with the, um, the living, breathing entity within her that has its own DNA code, um, that's between her and her maker. I said, also probably with the laws of the state of the land, since anyone that has its own DNA and its own spiritual body um, is a citizen, the last time I checked in America. Yeah. If you choose to go out and want to do away with that citizen, that's between you and God, but I would, you uh, and God and the state that you happen to live in our county. Okay, uh, apparently I'm running a commercial for Melanie Collette here. Okay, because your little sister, your little sister, <laughs> your little sister is angry in the chat room because she says I'm mischaracterizing what she said. I should say the first thing that she said. Because she's a God-fearing woman. Uh, Melanie Collette, this is what she said. I said scripturally it's, de it's a deaf no. That's the first thing I said. And I want you to know she's yelling at me, man. She <laughs> what are you going to do? I think she's stirring it up because she wants to uh, drive continued uh, listenership to her radio show. <laughs> Aren't you, aren't you high enough in the ranking that, that you have to have more points in the end? She's going to have further than this. She's not that kid. She's going to remember two spots. <laughs> oh, man. I know I'm going to. Oh, look at that face. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's an angry little sister. <laughs> what fuck? <laughs> oh, you know you're going to hear about it, right? You, you, that's the. <laughs> I do Ralph behind Ralph. That's right, me too. Me too. I'm trying to get Ralph up in here, man. He's bigger than I am, so she can swing at him. I'm, I'm scared of it. I ain't scared. You know, you have munchkins you gotta watch out for that that quite a part. I ain't scared. I'm hiding behind Ralph. <laughs> Listen, one more thing I want to I want to raise with you tonight, and thank you so much for staying over with me in terms of this. Um, Ashton Kutcher was on the Senate and the Senate committee today uh, testifying uh, about child sexual exploitation uh, and his desire to end it. And, and I wanted to give give your thoughts. We hear all about, um, and I have nothing against a young woman wearing uh, a a um, dress with Donald Trump. And blaze it on it and make America great. I have no problem with that. I think that was absolutely wonderful, absolutely great. But we don't hear too many actors talking about issues like this. And I'm going to ask you, why is that? You know, I think for, much, for the most part, um, Hollywood, um, and I'm taking this from Dave Manor, Hollywood. They're outside of the fray. They don't have a true touch on what's truly happening in America because they think America's the world that they live in. It's heavily steeped in a lot of the foolishness and immorality that, you know, that we end up talking about on a regular basis. But it's always great when somebody comes forward and, and, and basically you know, talks about the elephant in the room and the first honesty of issues with, um, you know, the, the sexualization of, of, of our youth in America because of the entertainment industry. It's kind of really interesting. They want to throw rocks at the bad things are happening but not acknowledge it. It's because of them that the things happen in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, uh, will, will his example today um, be something that the liberals turn to? Uh, or, or, or am I just naive and, and hoping for something? You know, I, I, I don't know. I, it, it might be just an issue of the week with them. And much like now, it's a cool designer thing to do good about black babies in foreign countries. <laughs> look, I got an Asian. Look, I got a Mexican. Oh, look. <laughs> we are talking tonight and so glad to have him on our air tonight. Uh, the Exception Conservative Show live on the Exception Conservative Network. Uh, Lonnie Poindexter, uh, who is blazing his own trail and setting the world on fire. Uh, with his wonderful program, Lion Chasers Radio. 
Uh, tell everyone how can they can listen to your program, sir. They can catch me Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Uh, um, yeah, at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time Zone at Urban Family Talk. Um, we're also on traditional radio towers across the country. The name of the show is Lion Chasers with Lonnie Poindexter. And you better give a listen. You will not be disappointed. And I steal a lot of good stuff from the exceptional ones. So. <laughs> <laughs> I steal it from you we first. Give, we give them credit for it. <laughs> yeah, we give a shout out. I see Mary, I see Mary Brockman in the chat room. Um, kudos to Mary, and I see uh, Brother Ralph there. I see Mike Mama 46. Woo! <laughs> and um, Claudia, Claudia's in the chat room as well. And, and Dan, so, you know, we're a big, happy family, aren't we? We are indeed. And Claudia's a beautiful woman. You saw her at the Trailblazer e event. Uh... Wow, I'm telling you, very beautiful young woman. All right, and that's what that's to be expected because she's conservative. You know, it, it, it goes with the territory. <laughs> Lonnie, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thanks, Rob. All right. Lonnie Point, Dexter, Lion Chaser Radio. You know what's coming up next on Sackheads Radio Night. It's Wednesday night. Uh, we're going to release the Kraken in just a few right after these messages. All right, gentlemen. Get your cigarettes. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> it's that time, baby. Time to play that commercial that we love so much. Hi, it's your business diva here, Melanie Collette of Money Talk with Melanie on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m., we talk all things money on a global, domestic, and household scale that affects you and your wallet. You don't want to miss it. From the warfront to the streets of our nation's capital, men of faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show, 9.05 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. It's a new day on New Day, Black and Red. Good morning. I'm Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Okay, folks, that's not how it goes. I think I'm Shannon, and I you're so. Michael. Yeah. Okay. We are The Right Way with Shannon and Mike. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Live on SHR Media. And on TECN. Where we'll be talking about all kinds of things. From sports and politics. To food and entertainment. To money. Family. And anything else in between. Community, holidays, all kinds of things. It'll be great. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Hey, it's Jersey Joe. Put the reverb common sense. You can catch me every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com. That's every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shrmedia.com. Thank you for the turkey, McCall. And oh, I really enjoy ICRN, your station, the station I listen to. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Dominique, for that. Uh, the best late night conservative talk show in America. That is radio. And listen, there are no people better on the air to give you the best conservative talk than Sackhead John and Sackhead Clint. Uh, and uh, we're working on immigration papers for certain other guys who have to work here, too. <laughs> For those who are tuning in around the world to the best late night conservative talk, 
That trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back to the Exceptional Professor Show live from the nation's capital. In a few minutes, we will be getting the Kraken going. Uh, we will release the Kraken on the world, and it's not a pretty sight for a liberal, not at all. But I wanted to bring on tonight one of the big daytime stars of TECN, Miss uh, <clears throat> Melanie Collette. Uh, <laughs> I usually don't even answer the phone with this. <laughs> so, if you can hit that little button so that, that we don't hear the reverb back or whatever, you can always tune in later to hear yourself. Because uh, you're not listening to me. Miss <laughs> Melanie Collette. Now, there are people in the chat room who think that I'm abusing you tonight. First, about the promo, which I think is a very sexy promo. Uh, and I think it's very poignant. <laughs> uh, and David, I... As long as you can pop with his presentation, that's all, with the whole cigarette thing. And, <laughs> and then, <you> know. <laughs> but Dave and I always go out, we go out on the porch when that, that, that plays so that we can smoke our cig. And then we come back in and we're okay. So... <laughs> you know what, that's, that's, you know, you probably want to talk to somebody about that. <laughs> Out there. <laughs> my <laughs> wife. You might want to see somebody. My wife is sleeping. Thank you very much. <laughs> now. I'm just, I'm just and, and, and don't pick up the phone and call her either. No. <laughs> I want to call her. I know you will. <laughs> I know you will. Oh man. Uh, but number two, I, I want everyone to hear from you what you were saying about assisted suicide, uh, physician assisted suicide, because I don't want people saying that I misquoted you or took away your uh, privilege and freedoms of free speech uh, by insinuating things that I may have said. I did not. Did not. Did not. You started three lines down. You start from the, the very first thing I said. You started with the little thing I said. I'm a commentator. What I said was, scripturally, it's, what I said was, okay. scripturally, it's definitely a no. That was the first thing I said. First thing. And then the second thing I said, but do I want to, do I want to stand between someone and their maker? And what I meant by mm -hmm. that was, if I want to, from a, from a, and I believe I said from a political standpoint, standpoint. Meaning, <laughs> do I think that I, as a fellow human being, have the right to tell someone who is suffering horribly, and you're talking to someone by close family members, die of cancer, mm -hmm. um, to tell that person by law that they can't do that, thus making me an inner you know, our relationship with our Creator is a personal one. Mm -hmm. And whether or not He forgives us is a personal one. And what's in our hearts is personal. So, do I, as a legislator, want to go so far as to say that that person can't do that? That's what I meant by that. Mm -hmm. Is it for me? Do I believe it's morally wrong? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, that's not something that I would do. Mm -hmm. But at, from, from a law do I want to go so far as to intercede on someone's behalf and tell them that they can't do it? Mm. 
All right. they're suffering. I think six months is a little far out, but who am I to make that decision? That, that's all I'm saying. But I, but I, I believe that, as Lonnie said, our life is not our own. I would never encourage anyone to do that. I would discourage it as long as possible. Also, don't know what it feels like to be in so much pain that you're on a constant work being dress. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, and I believe strongly that our creator uh, does understand that. Yes. Uh, does know what that feels like. Mm-hmm. It is able to read that person. And if they were to make that decision, it's in a position to offer forgiveness, you know, where it's not deserved. Yes. So that that that's why my position is what it is. I under- is that clear? <laughs> you f- I can feel that hair rolling, finger up in the air. Uh oh, <laughs> no, you didn't. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> so that, so that, I'm just saying that that's what I meant, and and, and that and, and you know, to me, that's where the extension of of mercy is because we are only human, and when you're talking about people who are suffering horribly. And like I said, I, I've seen it more than I care care to mention. Um, I, I, I don't know mm-hmm. that 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 um, our Lord and Savior doesn't make room for that in, in His mercy. Well, well, well that's all I'm saying. Well, that, first, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, first and foremost. For those following along at home, the only unpardonable sin is to know Christ and not accept Him. That is the only unpardonable sin. Um, right. So all sins are forgivable, but we don't ask government to decide for us whether God forgives or not. We, in fact, want government to stay out of the decision yeah. of killing our own uh, our own family members or whatever. And we understand that pain and suffering are a part of life, uh, and that alone is not a reason to end it. Uh, and, and I understand what you're saying. I I, 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 want, I see that's why I brought you on because I am a fair and just man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I under, and listen, I understand exactly what you're saying from an intellectual standpoint. Yeah. But from someone who has never been there, I don't find myself to be in a position to make that call for someone. I am because I've never been through. I've never been through it. Uh, okay. And and, 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 I, and I I don't believe I believe that God is the only one who is able to measure that empathy properly. I, I don't think I'm in a position to. Yeah, I understand what you're so, saying. I understand what you're saying. I really do. Um, but I do not want government involved. But in, yeah, yeah. Especially. Yes, I mean the scriptures. The scriptures are, are, are really clear, and it's really cut and dry. Uh, but I think that that's why God doesn't allow us to judge because it's not our job. Okay, that we were. If we wait judge, a minute. That's a different judge. show. That's a different show. Uh, I'm, go- I'm just saying. I'm just saying that you're wrong on that one, Melody. <laughs> but I thank you so much for coming on my program. <laughs> Not a, I mean, decide their ultimate fate. <laughs> no, no. Okay, I have to bring the Kraken on. Uh, and trust me, when I see you tomorrow, I will be hiding. I will be hiding behind the Kraken because I know payback is something. So, can you tell? Oh yeah, let's see all of y'all. Payback, Mr. Jones, all of y'all. See you tomorrow. This is the Clinton. Every last one of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Belly, tell everybody how they can listen to your program. You can listen to my program Monday, Wednesday, and from ten o five. Money Talk for Melanie. Uh, you can catch me on my Facebook page live, Money Talk for Melanie. Tweet me at Money Talk Mel or email me at Money Talk with Melanie at gmail dot com. Thank you so much for the same response. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to know that I am a very fair and kind man. You see that? You see that? I don't have to wait for my laurels. I don't have to give anyone the opportunity of saying how great thou art. Uh, I want you all to know. See, I, I cared so much. Not really. I cared very much. And I wanted to make certain that before the cracking came on, she had an opportunity to express herself. All right. Cracking, we'll get ready to call you here. (laughs) 
we were all be hiding be hiding behind Ralph. <laughs> no, you did not get kicked to the curb. Oh my God! You did not get kicked to the curb, Kraken. <laughs> J. Chittam Sr., you will find him on the Afternoon Drive Time Show, The Right Guys, on TECN. Uh, he is also a great consultant, political consultant in Washington, D.C. with uh, the Black Republicans uh, Consulting LLC. Uh, it's a pleasure and honor to have you on the air with us tonight, sir. It's always good to hang out with the exceptional one himself <laughs> and all of Listeners, wherever they may be on the face of the earth. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're supposed to be hiding behind you tomorrow, man. And then you put that remark out there. This is radio. Looks don't matter. <laughs> hey, the truth is the truth. It will set you free. Okay, now let me correct me again. Black Elephants, LLC. All right, Black Elephants, LLC. Thank you very much, Melanie. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's let's be precise about that. Let me put that back in there for her, uh, so she can get me back next time. Black Elephants Consultant. Uh, LLC. There we go. There we go. Right there. Right back at you. <laughs> uh, Ralph. Uh, you. And I agree on life all the way down to the 99 yard line. Uh, uh, and I would presume that you disagree <laughs> with uh, the mayor, Muriel Bowser. I just want to hear your opinion regarding physician assisted suicide, since this is a very big topic tonight. <laughs> well, uh, for me, God is the giver of life, God is the taker of life. And man does not have the law. I'm sorry to step in to make that ultimate decision. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that includes um, the state-sponsored death penalty. <coughs> for me, it also <laughs> assisted suicide simply because a person taking his or her own life is just a difference of, of degree. Mm -hmm. You are still taking a life. The fact that you are taking your own life is irrelevant. If the mm. taking of life is wrong, then the taking of life is also wrong. Mm. So I, I, I'm a life guy, period, across the board. There you go. And I, I have my druthers regarding the state-sponsored death penalty uh, because I believe that that is a remedy uh, for a criminal offense. Uh, and I agree that we can disagree and we are great friends otherwise. Uh, but it's important. This is, but, but at least my logic is. But at least my logic is eternally consistent. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I tell you, only on TECN will you get this kind of uh, conversation uh, going across the board. I am telling you, Ralph J. Chittam Senior with Black Elephants Consultant LLC. Thank you very much, Melanie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what an attitude, sir. Uh, today, uh, the uh, mayor of the District of Columbia uh, actually sent back a, a bill, and I'm going to come across that. Uh, and it's the paid family leave bill. She sent it back to the D.C. City Council unsigned, uh, thus allowing it to become the law of the District of Columbia. Uh now, according to that particular bill, uh, it is to uh, offer anyone working for a private employer in D.C., whether or not they live in the city, eight weeks of paid parental leave, six weeks of paid family leave, and two weeks of paid medical leave. Uh, and, and so I, I, I have to ask you, sir, 
uh, when your consulting firm starts growing like that, will you be leaving DC? <laughs> Probably. But here's the bigger point. What the mayor did, what Muriel Bowser did today, mm -hmm. that was a punk move. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what the Republican Party has done when that bill hit Capitol Hill. They should take that bill, they should say, it is not right, they should send it back downtown to the mayor, tell her to either sign it or veto it, and then we will consider it. Because he, like said, she just played a punk move because she didn't want to put her name on something that would be controversial. She didn't want to veto something that would be controversial. What we had was a weak mayor taking a punk move out from between a rock and a hard place. And if I were Congress, I, I do it. I would send it back to her, tell her to do her job, and then send it back up to the hill. Now, there might be some people who are listening in the chat room and listening around the country to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. Uh, and they might be saying, well, gee, Ken and Ralph, why are you all so mean spirited? Why, why can't people pay into that? Uh, and it's only going to cost two hundred and fifty million dollars. Don't you want poor women to be able to go home and have a job, uh, come back to a job? Well, first things first. I haven't. That's what I just called a man off for being a punk. Well, first things first. And, and, and truthfully, see, and that's what liberals would do. Mm -hmm. I, there is nothing that I said that addressed the merits of the bill one way or another. I said the bill wasn't right. It should be sent back to the <laughs> uh, also decided on veto and then send it back up to the hill. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. That's what you said. And truthfully, right, that's what I But you're right, liberals would say, it. oh, you don't want women to have health care? Exactly. Exactly. Now, the, the, the whole idea here is that this is a tax on payroll. So really, it's a tax increase. Uh, and a great burden of that will be upon small companies. Uh, they will say, well, no, that's not the case. There's a cap on it. But the bottom line is $250 million a year because of a 0.62% payroll tax on employers. 0.62. That's a lot of money. <laughs> But they're going to be collecting this tax for a number of years before the benefit is even applied because they have to build up a cash reserve in order to pay off the benefits. So you're going to have companies in D.C. paying this $250 million a year for I think the next three or four years before the people who are going to benefit from this leave can eat. So that's the insanity of it. Exactly. So you have people who have you know, corporations and companies basically putting money into a slush fund to take care of another government mandate. Okay, and, and what's, the, what's the name of that again? It's called a what? A slush fund. Because all that money is not going to be used. <laughs> Social Security was the same way. It was supposed to be used as a lockbox. The people pay into it as well as they get out. When you give $250 million on an annual basis to the state government, and they don't have to balance their budget. Well, they, in district, they do have to balance their budget. But you're giving them $250 million or more capital to use. They're not going to spend that the right way. They're going to misuse and misappropriate that money. That money's going to be gone. Half that money's going to wind up in the general fund to pay for some other social program. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll release the Kraken tonight uh, for the world to hear. Uh, and I would encourage you all to listen to the Kraken, uh, along with Lonnie Poindexter, every afternoon drive time uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. on TECN, uh, the right guys. And I love, I, I really love uh, your your closing remark. What is the closing for uh, your program? Well, it's the closing, as I said, how we open um, every hour of our show. We give people a very short statement so they understand how we have developed our worldview. And we just state very simply that we are humans by race, Christians by faith, 
American by nationality, and conservative by choice. There you That's go. And, and, if ever, we're wrong. And, and, <laughs> and, and, on, and if ever, on the rarest of rarest of rarest of occasions, we may make a slight error, we will always be right. Exactly. Uh, so we're looking at Congress uh, tearing up this particular bill uh, when it gets there uh, because they're having some real problems with the District of Columbia in terms of uh, uh, sovereignty, uh, the right of governance. Uh, and right now there are battles going on on Capitol Hill to take over the district government uh, because uh, apparently they have run roughshod over the whole concept of home rule. Uh, and so, so what, well, what the district did is they ran rough shot uh, over the um, fiduciary responsibilities that Congress has over the District of Columbia. Yep. They passed a, a, a law in the District of Columbia which says that local funds do not have to be cleared in order to be spent. And the district Congress doesn't have to, you know, have anything to do with it. They just, mm -hmm. they're money. Well, the problem with that is that provision flies in the face of the clear language of the Home Rule Charter, and it also flies in the face of the constitutional powers given to the Congress to overthrow the District of Columbia in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. There you go. But you know that they don't use that on, on uh, at the D.C. building, district building. They don't use that. Uh, the Constitution, no, I think they burnt that thing a long time ago. <laughs> How you can come across but, stuff like but, this. What they've is, what they've done is they come up with this tortured legal opinion regarding the Home Rule Charter, mm -hmm. which they claim gives them the right to spend their spend locally raised funds outside of congressional oversight. And clearly, the Home Rule Charter does not grant the District of Columbia that authority. So, what's happening now is. Daddy is showing up and he's going to spank the child. Yes, he is! <laughs> That's why we love the Kraken so much. Uh, I want to ask you tonight, um, the left has gone berserk crazy. Absolutely berserk crazy. And they have been given more kerosene uh, or gasoline for the fire as a result of the Mike Flynn matter, his resignation on Monday night uh, in the... Darth of the night, and Andrew Puzder, uh, who has stepped down, uh, or at least uh, withdrawn his consideration for Labor Secretary, uh, the left feels that they have become, become winners. Winners! You're going to get tired of winning. Uh, do you see it that way, sir? No. Well, honestly, um, Flynn screwed up when he lied. Yeah. Right out. Yeah. You don't lie to the President of the United States, you don't lie to the Vice President of the United States, especially if you are you know, in line to be a part of the national security apparatus. The conversation that he held with the Russian was not illegal, it was not immoral, it was not unethical. It was, however, outside the bounds of protocol. Yeah. Yeah. If he had just answered the question, Honestly, we wouldn't be here right now. Exactly. So, truthfully, the fact that Sufan is out is his own fault. Now, as far as Putner is concerned, I predicted that Putner was going to go down in flames the minute the story broke that he had an undocumented illegal working in his house for five years and he hadn't paid the taxes. <laughs> <laughs>
interest would be behind it would be legal and not paying the taxes. It was a consistency issue, and it's unfortunate, but now we know for all of our rich friends out there who have hired illegal gardeners and nannies and chauffeurs, do not think for a minute that you will ever be appointed to a position in the United States government that requires um, confirmation because you will not be confirmed. There you go. But I, I want to ask you also, shouldn't that have been caught by vetting? I mean, since we're doing extreme vetting for those who are coming in from overseas, uh, shouldn't that have been an extreme vetting of Pudsa? I, I mean, shouldn't this have been known before they announced that he was going to be the Labor Secretary? Oh, do you want a long answer or a short answer? Let's go with a short one. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we never, and we never should have been nominated. Mm -hmm. You know, this, all this other stuff is smoke and mirrors. Exactly. You know, um, the discredited cult and that he abuses a, or the fact that he uses family clad women to sell hamburgers. Who cares? Yeah. I mean, wait a minute. People are complaining about these family clad women still going to, I bet they, Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm all, I, I already feel like I'm in trouble, Ralph. Uh, I'm listening to the crack and I just yelled out, yeah. Uh, and, and I bet you Melanie has her finger on the phone uh, to call my wife. I, <laughs> I, I am appalled. Oh, oh, exactly. <laughs> I'm appalled and offended that scantily clad women did a burger commercial. So there. <laughs> and... and and what, what about the position of Sports Illustrated? Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm what about when you... you know, and they, they don't do it as much anymore, but they still have, at some of the exhibits at the car show, you know, these six-foot tall, drop-dead gorgeous women going, look at the Mustang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, see, this is all the hypocrisy on the part of the left. They pick and choose when they want to get, become morally indignant. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So, look, the, women, the women in these commercials are paid for. They get paid residuals. These women have options. They are doing it because they want to. It's not like they're being exploited in, in some kind of a ISIS sex camp somewhere. So, no. <laughs> but the only issue that was important for me as far as puzzle was concerned was the kind of illegal in the in his household staff and has in your taxes. That alone disqualifies him from office. Thank Anything you. else is just smoking out there. Thank you very much, sir. The crack, and we got to let him go. Uh, Ralph, how can people listen to you, and how can those around the country consult you uh, regarding their intentions to enter the world of politics? Yeah, well, from Monday through Friday, uh, you can listen to me and Larry Poindexter. We have the right guys on TECN um, at 4.05. This is from 4 or 5 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Oh, and the same part, I will be doing Roland Martin show tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. So please tune in and we'll see if I can get anybody's head to explode that <laughs> 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 Thank you. This is my website. Please visit my website, blackelephantconsultants.com. Black Elephant. Consulting.com. I have some blog posts up here. You can reach out, ask me questions. Um, you can check out um, my bio and the bio of the consultants that we have on board. You'd be surprised, many that you already know. Let's make America great again. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. I'm all for it. Kraken, thank you so much for coming on tonight, and we look forward to listening to your program tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. You can come into the same chat room that you're in right now and listen to the show and give your commentary, your comments, like certain people do, make their comments, uh, <laughs> and Ralph is kind enough, he'll respond to you. <laughs> we love you, man. <laughs> I will. God bless you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not through yet. The big night continues on. In a few moments, we will be talking with none other than one of the most powerful women in the state of Maryland when it comes to politics. Yes, uh, the 
woman, uh, the beautiful woman that she is, and brilliant woman that she is, Shannon Wright, and she has a big event that we want to talk about tomorrow night uh, in Baltimore. Uh, it's a first, and we want you to be a part of it. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of the best in Urban Conservative Talk. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation. First to the Republican, and then to the Socialist. We'll be back. Want to know the best kept secret in flea and tick control? It's the money you'll save with 1 800 Pet Meds. Save 30, 40, even 50% on veterinary recommended brands for your pet, and we'll deliver them free right to your door. And now you can get the safe and effective results of a top brand for even less with new Flea for X Plus. Four way action to kill fleas, ticks, lice, and mosquitoes. Plus, it starts working in five minutes to one hour and is backed by our 100% happy guarantee. Call now or order online from 1 800 Pet Meds. With home values up and interest rates near all-time lows, you probably know that now is a great time to refinance. Like the Johnsons, who save $436 a month. $436 a month? It's simple. Just go to LendingTree.com, compare loan offers for free, and see how much you could save in just five minutes. Oh, you said the bank gave you the best rate. Yeah. Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. I have to do everything myself. Someone is sleeping on the couch tonight. Thank you for the turkey in the cult. And I really enjoy ICRN, your station, the station I listen to all day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Dominique, for that. The best late night conservative talk show in America, Black Kids Radio. And listen, there are no people better on the air to give you the best in conservative talk. Sackhead Sean and Sackhead Clan. Uh, and uh, we're working on the immigration papers for a certain other guy who happens to work here too. <laughs> <laughs> for those who are tuning in around the world to the best late night conservative talk, Sackhead's radio. From day's first light to night's last glimmer, your satisfaction is our responsibility. On the range or in the field of duty, you can rely on Brownell's lifetime guaranteed gun parts, tools, and supplies anytime, any place. It's how we've done business since 1939. Brownells. Welcome back. You're listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism. What is the power of liberation? First to the Republican and then the Socialist. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in the commercial free period of our program. No more commercials. Uh, you don't have to worry about all SHR Live or uh, HP Talk Radio Live or. Uh, or on High Plains Pundit Media Live, 
uh, and certainly all the great people from Red Nation Rising. They left about an hour ago. Uh, what a great, what a great show we're having right now. Uh, Perry Drake will be joining us uh, starting on Tuesday of next week, CP, CPAC week, in fact, uh, at 10:05. Uh, and I want to make this announcement for everyone because I made this promise that I would make this announcement tonight. You know, on Monday nights uh, at, uh, I'm sorry, Mon Sunday nights, forgive me, Sun actually, it's not even Sunday nights, it's Sunday mornings. <laughs> Get it together, man. Uh, Sunday mornings at 9.05 a.m., I do an American Conservative's exploration of the inspired Word of God. Uh, and we do an exploration of the scriptures, and we do it in such a fashion where you get a understanding of what the scriptures meant at that particular time period to apply it to your life. Now, uh, in this particular case, uh, I always believed that there was something missing, that we needed a one-two punch. And so I want to announce to everyone tonight, I found the two punch. Uh, I might be a heavy right hand, but she's a left undercut. I'm going to announce to you, to, to you tonight that starting at 10.05 a.m. on Sunday mornings, uh, February 26th is the start date to that, my anniversary week. Uh, in fact, uh, Leslie Ann Stoffel will be doing her program live on TECN called The Real Clear Israel. The Real Clear Israel. So... Uh, I'm excited to make that announcement tonight uh, that we are growing by leaps and bounds and starting on February 26th, uh, yep, that's uh, at 10.05 uh, a.m., you will get a chance to hear a woman who is passionate uh, about Israel uh, and, uh, and we are very thankful to have her as a member of our team. We're growing. We're growing big. It just is that way on TECN, and so uh, we're very thankful for this particular opportunity to have that beautiful young woman uh, actually open up the doors. Because there are lots of, and I told her earlier today, there are lots of people uh, who preach on Sunday mornings who have never been to Israel, uh, and many of them actually find themselves supporting jihadism if only they knew. Ladies and gentlemen, and only they knew, and they will know starting February 26th. Yeah, it is, Dave. It's very early for her, 7 in the morning for her. Uh, we are contacting now Shannon Wright, 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi. Shannon Wright, uh, the beautiful little princess uh, who airs every morning, drive time morning, 7 to 9 a.m., on the Exceptional Conservative Network, TECN, with her superstar husband, uh, Mike uh, Wright. Uh, Shannon, it's a great privilege talking with one of the most powerful political women in Maryland. <laughs> yes, and a good evening. It was awesome to be here on a part of your show and all that wonderful good stuff. <laughs> It is so good to listen to you all on the mornings. Uh, 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 something about that uh, 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 that thing I want to talk with you about tomorrow. But you don't have to take that one. I and that I'm told in hospital. I thought it was a witness protection program. But see, when people are out and about and free to do what they do, those are the stories they choose. <laughs> now Shannon, Shannon Wright is a spitfire. I, I'm telling you, you do not say no to Shannon. When was the last time you heard the exceptional one say no to you? I I don't know. I I don't think you know. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> she will smile with you. She has the prettiest smile. She'll smile with you, but if she sees that you're getting ready to say no, all of a sudden, a, a total different look comes on her, and, and you're forced to say yes. What did I say? Well, you know, listen, people have said no to me in the past on different issues, and, and, and at the time when they said it, they meant it. I just really pulled out the air, <laughs> and that there is another solution. And at that time, 
when you're in a time crunch, it is best to just tell me that from the beginning and the world of the happy and care. While we're not biologically related, she is my little sister and it's very difficult to say no to the little sister. And she knows it too. <laughs> she, I, I, I mean, I, I accidentally picked up the phone. Exactly. I accidentally picked up the phone and just pressed the button and she was on and she said, are you going to be there? She didn't even say hello. Are you going to be there tomorrow? Uh, yes. <laughs> Shay, tell everybody where we're going to be tomorrow. <laughs> we are going to be at the Rush uh, African American Museum in Baltimore City. It is the first ever African American History Month reception sponsored 100% by the Maryland State GOP. Okay, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry, did you say the Maryland? State, I, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I, I think there was some frequency problem on the air or something. You, are, the Maryland State. Oh, no, no. It was clear. It was. <laughs> yes. The Maryland State Republican Party, of which I am the third vice chair, really elected this woman. Um, I am the first black woman to be elected to the Maryland State Republican Party. I'm going to be a huge fan. So for those of you that got something other than what you thought you did, try. Uh, it is my intention to move the needle in the state of Maryland. In order to do that, you have to move the needle in Baltimore City and TG County. And one of the ways you do that is visual. Exactly. Exactly. And one of the best ways of doing that is to show yourself present and, and active and engaged in Baltimore City. So that's what we're doing. Now, I, I, I know a lot of people are absolutely shocked. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, there are no Republicans in Baltimore. Why is this? <laughs> really? Well, so we should find another. And I intend to make sure it's a reach out to each and every one of Wow. Now, now, this is a first. I'm glad that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You, you're going to say. Yes. Um, well. There are a lot of Republicans in Baltimore City, and they, up until now, just have not had a reason to come out and engage. Um, the party hasn't been good. Mm -hmm. And when the party was visible, it was visible, yet not understanding that some to gain the support of people, you have to stop talking, sit down, and listen. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to see what the issues are. And from that, Formula and strategy and plan that sits within the platform of the public party, expressing the people that forward momentum means being free to move in the direction we need to go. Wow. Wow. I, I am simply amazed. You, you know, I. it takes a lot to amaze me. I'm amazed right here uh, uh, that this is actually going to take place tomorrow. Now, you probably only got one or two people, you know, going to show up, maybe from the local PTA meeting or something, right? Yeah, you, you don't have any big guests, do you? Mm -hmm. Probably not that well. Um, yeah, we do. Matter of fact, we have, we started out with um, three speakers. Uh, we are now up to one, two, three, four, five. Wow. Um, and they are all awesome and dynamic. We are starting with um, Dr. Tony Campbell, who is the current Maryland State Black um, Republican Coalition chairman. And um, he's going to talk about some of the things that are going on with the coalition. And then he's going to introduce Mr. Clark, who. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Republican Coalition, and a current commissioner with Maryland State Board of Commerce. Um, and she's going to talk about the history of Baltimore and, and some of the things that have to shape the city. Mm -hmm. Then we have um, showing that centerpiece, Michael Steele, who, as we know, is a former Maryland Lieutenant Governor and RNC Chairman, um, talking about the strength of Maryland. And then also talking about the strength of Maryland, we have 
for the bird who is allowing us mm -hmm. uh, this announcement tomorrow at the reception that hmm, has not been made publicly, that has to do with uh, different departments in the administration. Um, and when finishing up that program, there's a young man by the name of John Gordon who came in from California to be able to paint a picture that would see no one would be able to refuse. This young man is going to paint a picture with a road map on how to get Baltimore from where it is up in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. A shiny beacon technologic city of the 21st century. Wow. Now, I, I just want to ask you, um, I, I have an idea, but I want to know who is responsible for getting the Maryland GOP, uh -huh. state GOP, I'm, I'm, the state GOP, uh, uh -huh. and the Baltimore GOP uh -huh. <laughs> to do this. I, I mean, y'all haven't done this in what? Okay. Uh, since Freddie Douglas. Let me just make sure before I answer this question in my special channel and person of the day, let me understand the question clearly. You are asking who is the, the new and dynamic force that is motivated the United States GOP to host a bit, to sponsor this event and, and, and in conjunction with the Baltimore City Centre Committee. Is that what you're asking? You're asking for who? Yeah. Yeah, what possible? What first made that possible? Yes. You want to know? Yes. What God, what I said, you know, counting and telling me not every moving sentence. Nothing. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And the angel that he used to make it come to pass, because uh, it would have been wrong for her to say it, yeah. I'll say it. Uh, uh, Shannon Wright is being used uh, very, very poignantly uh, in the state of Maryland to state of Maryland to right some wrongs, uh, the People's Republic of Maryland, that is, to right some wrongs and actually get the direction changed uh, towards uh, a more free uh, and more prosperous Maryland. How can people get in contact with you? How can they go to this event tomorrow? Uh, we can reach me on Facebook. You can um, come to this uh, right way, the Shannon and Mike Facebook page. We can go to the Right for Maryland Facebook page. Um, go to the TPCM and reach out to any of the hosts that you want to the host of the Shannon and the TPCM. We're also doing that tomorrow now. So, yeah, we need to find it. I got a feeling. <laughs> I just got, I have an inkling, a small inkling, a small feeling here uh, that the Maryland State GOP have learned what I learned a very long time ago. You cannot say no uh, to my baby sister. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they fully understand that, you know, but they will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am telling you, you are missing a pearl, a jewel event every morning, Monday through Friday. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, I, I will not make this announcement till sometime probably next two weeks, but uh, there will be a big announcement about the listening uh, to The Right Way with Shannon and Mike. Uh, they do a wonderful job getting the very uh, best radio out in the morning from 7 to 9 a.m. and I'm putting it in the chat roll for you all to click on and make sure that you're up at 7 a.m. If you're going to be up, you might as well be listening to Shannon and Mike. God bless you. We love you dearly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And, and this is all going to do some great things. And thank you as a visionary behind the TPC. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't remember anything we said tonight, I want you to remember this. God bless America. It's time for America to bless God. We'll see you tomorrow night. Stay in. Uh, go to uh, SHR Media tonight. 
Uh, SHRmedia.com for the best late night talk show in America. Good night. God bless. Thank you.